Hello everybody, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, and welcome to my comparison of the LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series, UCS Imperial Star Destroyer sets. We'll be sticking with my classic scoring system, however, I've actually added two categories for this particular set that aren't usually on my comparison videos. If you do want to see more of my comparison videos, I'll put a playlist link down below. But I have added the Tantive 4 and Box and Instruction categories just for the UCS Star Destroyer comparison, which gives us seven separate categories with minifigures, playability, design, value, and MNR opinion being the other five. Of course, the final score will be tallied up at the end to determine which UCS set is better. Before we do get into all of our categories, Categories. You do get to learn a little bit about each set. We'll give you some general information. The version on the left here is set number 10030, released in 2002 with 3,104 pieces for the price of $300. That's about $428 in 2019 money. It doesn't contain any minifigures. It has a plaque with a bunch of information and a mini Tantive 4. As far as the 2019 version, it's set number 75252. It includes 4,784 pieces and retails for $700. Of course, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about that price, I'm sure, but it also does include two minifigures, an Imperial officer and crew member, and it also does have a little display stand plaque. So there's your general information about both sets. Now we can get into the minifigure category. On the right side, we have the minifigures for the 2019 set. On the left side, we have no minifigures from the 2002 set, which obviously means the 2019 set is going to win the minifigure battle. I don't think there's really an argument here to argue that no minifigures is better than two minifigures. You get an Imperial officer and crew member here for your Imperial Star Destroyer in 2019. Meanwhile, in 2002, again, you get absolutely nothing. So it's quite a stark contrast. These figures look great. I think in both my opinion and a lot of other people's opinion, these are some of the better looking Imperial officer crew member figures we've ever gotten. However, I think most people are a little bit sour from the fact that they just don't get um, like a Darth Vader or a Palpatine or just any sort of exclusive cool minifigure that isn't just another Imperial officer. I think that's where a lot of people go sour on the 2019 version. Now, I don't blame them. I, I feel like they could have done better with the figure selection. However, for the purposes of this being a comparison video, 2019 is going to run away with the characters. So with the 2019 version taking the figures, we'll give it one tally mark. We'll just give them a check mark, and then again, we're tallying those up at the end to see which set is better. Our next category is playability, and much to the disdain of many people that were interested in the new UCS Star Destroyer, the new one contains no interior place to play with or anything of that nature, which again, to many people is disappointing to me personally. I didn't find it that disappointing, but neither did the 2002 version, so both sets in this matter are pretty much a draw. You could make an argument that the 2019 version does have two minifigures and you can play with minifigures so therefore you get more playability. I think the Tantive 4s also provide some playability I suppose to swoosh around the Star Destroyer. You definitely aren't going to be picking up the Star Destroyer and swooshing it around. There's no swooshability on either of these Star Destroyers. Let me tell you that they're extremely heavy and especially the 2002 one is fragile which we'll get to in the design portion of this particular comparison but yes the playability is going to be a draw in my opinion. Now on to the design category. There are quite a few similarities between these sets, obviously, because they are based off the same reference material. They're both Imperial Star Destroyers, and to people who say that the new one looks the same as the old one, you couldn't be further from the truth. The new one is an awesome upgrade from the old one. I mean, it is night and day how many different building techniques and different uh, greebling and looks the new one has when you look at it from different angles. It's just not even close. I mean, the old one, sure. I mean, it, it's obviously a Star Destroyer. In general, they're a big gray triangle. You can make that argument, I suppose, if that's the kind of person you want to be. However, they are just honestly just not even that close to being the same. I mean, everything about these two sets is about as different as you can make them. I mean, I don't know what else to do to make the Star Destroyer different than the old one than what LEGO's done here. So we'll start up at the command bridge. This is the 2019 version. You actually have the option to put the communications, I think it's the communications radar, in the downward position. You do not have that option on the 2002 version. It is stuck in place. It is not going anywhere. And you can see, I mean, it'll go somewhere if you push it hard enough, I'm sure. But uh, uh, this one is uh, very nicely on a hinge and can move up and down very easily. So there we go. 
The deflector shield dome design has changed. You can see they used the old golf ball piece and like a crater piece on the old one. The new one has a lot smoother of a look, which I much prefer to the older one. Um, obviously the front of the bridge there, uh, pretty dumbed down compared to what we have now. So many more little pieces on there and so many different pieces that are newer that they just didn't have back in the day to add that kind of detail. As for the neck of the ship, I suppose we'll call it, because uh, the spine is really what's going to be running up the middle on the inside. Say hello, Corey. Hey. <laughs> Corey's building a gingerbread house. Um, anyway, yeah, the neck of the ship is just kind of simple on the older one, just a very simple brick design, which there's nothing really wrong with. Um, nice uh, grill pieces in the back here, jumper plates, nice little details with the round pieces as well. The new one is kind of the same same concept. It's very simple, just kind of uh, grill pieces, a few more rod pieces and different things in there, but obviously just a slightly different design with plates facing out instead of just using the simplistic bricks there. Below the bridge of the set, you have this very large area, which on the newer one is a little bit more spread out, which I actually much prefer to the older one. Um, just so many more layers and greebling techniques used on this newer version here on this part of the set. Like, I just think it's also going to be night and day. I'll show you guys the same kind of angles on the older version here. And you can see, again, it's, it's just such a bigger mess on the older one. If that makes any sense, it just looks so much messier. It really does. It's weird because when I built this one, it didn't look messy to me. But now when you compare it to the new one, everything looks just so much cleaner and more tidied up that the older one just looks messy. And I think that's the best way to describe it. As far as the gun turrets on top here, just have a very simple design on the 2002 version. They can spin in circles uh, as you would expect. The newer version has much beefier designs, which I actually don't prefer to the uh, newer or older version rather. I think the older version has it beat as far as gun turret designs. I just like the simplicity of the older ones, to be honest. But if you like these beefy ones there for you, that's great. But they're just not for me. They're just too beefy. They do spin in circles like the other ones as well. The paneling on both Star Destroyers has uh, like raised panels on it as well. You can see this one uses them much, much more. Even a Nexo Knight shield thrown in there versus the older version, which is just pretty straightforward. Just like very long uh, plates on top. Really just used to uh, reinforce connections. Unlike the newer one, where it really uses the plates for detail and really accuracy to the uh, in-movie or in-universe model. The engine section of both sets are somewhat similar. They have kind of the inverted plates on the inside, which is really cool. I, uh, I think they did a great job on both versions being able to include that. That's one of the hardest parts of the sets to get right, I think, for me to, to be looking at them like this. But I think they've done a great job nailing that down. That being said, the engines on the newer one versus the older one is kind of a toss-up to me. Some people might like the simplicity of the older one, which also fits better with the overall style of the older one, I think, but the new one does have so much more detail. You have these cone pieces instead of these large tire pieces. These ones will fall off pretty easily. You can see I barely touched that fell right off, but the newer one will not do that, which is nice. So we've, we've seen some design improvements in aspects like that so that you don't end up with an engine on the ground. I just, you know, that's, that's just not preferable, I think, in a lot of people's minds. Also with the newer one, you have just these added tiles hanging off that just look really, really nice versus the older one, which obviously did not have any of that going on. But one more look at the engines here on the newer one, just to give you an idea. And then the older one in the background there with the fall an engine on the ground so very very nice uh each uh, star destroyer has greebling on the side here to kind of make up for uh the interim between the top and bottom panels and this greebling is the same on both sides of the newer star destroyer it actually looks really good on the new star destroyer they also have a one of the giant uh gun turrets on the side of the star destroyer there with a really nice design and it can actually um, move around it's on a little hinge there versus the older star destroyer which just has this wimpy little thing which is just kind of stuck in there and just kind of moves freely and is weird and not right. Uh, the greebling on this is also pretty nice though. On the inside, you can see you have a bottom greebling thingy and a top greebling thingy. Um, as far as the build process for that is concerned, it's actually a little bit more of a pain to build the older one because you have to build like so many individual sections and then attach them. These are just built as very long pieces and then attached all at once. And you build two of those at a time. So then you just flip them and then you're done. Like it's actually a lot easier to build the uh, newer version than the older version in that way, in my opinion, just so many more uh, refinements in that way. But that's like the exterior design of the ship. I think uh, people can look at the uh, side profile. You can see the newer Star Destroyer just looks a little bit sleeker than the older one. I think that's just, you know, small general improvements and refinements. But where you're really going to see the improvement on the newer Star Destroyer,
fur is on the interior. So let's open up both these puppies as much as possible and I'll show you guys the difference. So of course you're gonna wonder how do you gain interior access to either of these models. It's pretty simple really. On the older version, you first have to take off the whole bridge piece here. And this is pretty weak. Sometimes this can just kind of break in your hands. It's happened to me once, so I would keep that in mind. But you can take this whole section off like so. And again, you can see some of the strain being put on the pieces on the back there. You're gonna have to put those back together and give them a little push back. But um, yeah, so you pull that off, put that off to the side. And then you also have to pull this whole section off so you can put your hand in there like this, try to get a finger around it. This piece will come off, you know. It's a bit of a pain. It's definitely a bit of a pain. There we go. Yeah, right like that. And so now you have both sections removed from the Star Destroyer. To access the newer set's interior, there's these very large pieces on the front here that you build and you just basically pull them off. Now there's this thing on the front here that you can kind of see me wiggling. Um, that just kind of gets hit by these every time. So that's a bit of a flaw to me. I mean, it's not as bad as when that whole bridge piece collapsed on the older one, but uh, yeah, you can pull those both out and uh, we'll flip these around forward so you can see everything you need to see. On the interior of the original version here, you can see it's just pretty bland. I mean, everything's gray, so that can make building a bit difficult at times, other than a few splotches of color, obviously. But uh, the main problem with the 2002's design, especially structurally wise, is they used a lot of magnets. And the magnets apparently over time will deteriorate and they will not hold on to your pieces as well. But as you can tell, I can just pull these off if I really want to and lift up to get a better view of the inside. So there is the inside of the O2 version. Again, you can see a lot of gray there, which can make building a little bit difficult, especially with the older style instructions where just everything's just not as easy to see sometimes. Um, everything is just very simple technic pieces, very uh, cut and dry on the inside, just using pretty much the bare minimum to get the job done. If you want to lift the setup, basically you have one option. It's get this out of your way and then you can lift it up from here with one hand. Now, what you'll also notice is this stresses this Technic system, and you can see it doesn't really stay together the way it's supposed to. So I've had trouble with that. Uh, maybe you won't, but you definitely are gonna have to be careful picking this set up, but you can do it with one hand like this. It's not super heavy, which is actually a problem with the newer one we're gonna get to, but this one I can pick up with one hand relatively easily. It's not back heavy or anything because everything on the top here, unlike on this one, is removed. So that's actually a positive for that one um, other than that, though, I think the interior is pretty poor. I mean, the bottom side can just drop out like that if you hit it hard enough or pull on it barely. Like, the magnets just... The magnets are magnets, and unfortunately, they're just not the best thing for the job. Maybe it was the best thing they had in 2002, but obviously, compared to what we'll have over here, it's going to be night and day. So. And this set, I cannot pick up with one hand. It is incredibly back-heavy obviously because this giant bridge is still on there and the thing you're going to have to do to pick this up and i'll show you guys is pick it up with one hand but you're also going to need a second hand to lay underneath the star destroyer here to support the backside. uh this is probably picking up like 12 pounds here and that's just not easy to do when it's in this form factor at all like obviously 12 pounds isn't a ton but like when you have it like this it's it's not easy and i'll show you guys that but anyway so we look to the inside a lot more color than the 2002 version and there is a bit of a flaw with that there is a drawback uh sometimes the color does show through on this star destroyer i think uh you can see different angles where you can just kind of see it on the inside, which is a bit of a bummer. I wish they uh, would have used gray pieces anywhere that it could potentially show through. I mean, anything in here is fine. Just make that whatever color you want. But if it's going to show through, it's got to be gray. Uh, you just can't have that on a uh, UCS set that's for display. So the other thing I will say about the bridge on this one, it's so much sturdier. Everything is just Technic on the inside and it's all connected uh, with Technic pieces. I mean, this is going nowhere. Like I cannot lift this up. I can't take this off. Um, it's going nowhere unless I really want it to. <laughs> like. I don't know how else to put that. I mean, I really have to do a lot of work if I want to remove the whole bridge section. And that includes like taking off some technique pieces that are pretty in there, if you catch my drift. Like they're not going anywhere. Anyway, so you can see the interior is mostly colorful, a lot more large technique pieces like that. You can see uh, the connection for the panels, unlike on the older one where they really just use uh, the magnets. And then up on the other underside, you can see these pieces here, just like two by two plates essentially connecting them. Um, these one use uh, ball joints. You can see one of them right there. I mean, it creates a very strong connection. That's exactly how they're connected.
adjusted on the underside of the panels they have ball joints and they just clip right in and they are going nowhere so that is something that really the new one excels on i removed the front section of one of these panels so that you guys can see the inside better and i mean that's really uh the bulk of the reason that the uh, the price on this new set is so much higher it's just so many larger pieces than on the older one and so many nicer more specialized pieces than the older one as well i mean that's that cost is hard to uh put into words for a lot of people but it's definitely noticeable when you're building this set especially uh coming off the heels of building that one a month ago i mean the build quality is just so far superior it just runs all the way to the end of the star destroyer to give these panels all the support they are going to need this set should not droop over time at all so you'll notice these ball joints these ones do not connect up these two are actually unused on the top side but like i said um you're going to be using this one and this one to connect these uh top panels that are half a panel so uh, that is pretty nice you can also see these inverted pieces here those create uh the underbelly stuff that we're going to be taking a look at like without all this technic substructure none of that is possible and the 2002 version really exemplifies that i think so there's a look at the inside it's hollow for the most part there's nowhere to really put an interior there you can see the outline of the backside where the engines are built as well just everything on the inside is technic and it's really insane it's really fun to build actually one of these uh sets because of all the technic and then you move into the plates and everything it's just kind of a nice uh transition it's, it's like building two lego sets essentially you just go from one concept to another concept completely when you go to building the plates and everything okay so as i said you can just pick up the old star destroyer with one hand because it's literally just the frame like the frame and the panel it's very light so that's pretty easy to do so we'll just flip this forward get it out of our way but like i also mentioned those pieces come apart problem so the newer Star Destroyer has some issues uh, as far as weight goes. It's just a very heavy set. It's got a lot of large pieces. It might not have the most pieces, but it's still almost as heavy as the UCS Falcon. And picking it up with one hand is no easy task. So if you pick it up with one hand, I mean, you can't get your hand back any further. So the center of gravity is really probably like right here, um, which is pretty far back on something this heavy that you try to pick up with one hand. And as you can see, as I try to lift it up, it just want, wants to tip back. So what you have to do with the set you can do it with your left or your right hand but you have to lay a hand underneath here of the star destroyer to give it some support and you got to find the spot they show it in the instructions as well but it's so much easier to do if you have two hands otherwise this set is going to be way too heavy to lift with one hand i mean if you can lift it with one hand that's great but i just feel like it's way too back heavy the set starts to fall down but this design category is very complicated, obviously. One final design thing to mention before we take a look underneath these Star Destroyers is that they both have the gap. The gap is inevitable, really. Um, you can see on the newer Star Destroyer, I think they did a great job of trying to hide it as much as possible and cover it up as much as possible. Like, they really tried. Um, the older one... They didn't have the technology. I mean, the gap is much more noticeable on the older version here. It's a little bit wider at quite a few points, and it, it really just runs the entire length of the Star Destroyer, and it's unfortunate to see. I think that's one of the big improvements that the new one has um, over the older one. While it doesn't uh, completely eliminate the gap, because apparently that just wasn't possible, I'm sure they really tried, um the uh, older one just is so much more noticeable but let's go underneath underneath the older star destroyer you'll find a pretty simplistic stand just blank nothingness on the back side of it down near the engines and then here where you would have like the docking bay i mean technically the docking bay is there they kind of included it they just didn't have the pieces to actually build it so it's just an empty hollow space and that's it the newer one really excels i mean it's got this little space at the front here you can see that little opening. And then it has a full docking bay there for the Tantive 4. And you've got a little TIE fighter flying around. We'll attach the Tantive 4 up there in a minute. And then you have this whole other section in the back. This little dome or inverted dome on the bottom of the Star Destroyer, essentially. That, again, is just completely non-existent on the older one because it's got a stand there. So the newer stand is just a little bit of a wider base, which makes it a little bit more balanced, I think, than the older one. Not that balance was really an issue but just in case i suppose it also has four points of contact instead of uh two with the star destroyer which i think just helps uh keep it a little bit uh better on there especially with the newer one being heavier i think that was important as well but so attaching the tantive 4 is pretty easy there's a piece here there's that same piece here on the tantive 4 and you're really just going to line them up like so and attach it onto there you push back on the tantive 4 and just like that the tantive 4 is in the docking bay it's just as easy to remove it and have it fly away so pretty nice little docking bay there 
In my opinion, design is absolutely 110% going to have to go to the 2019 version of the set. I think it's just not even close on so, so many levels. The new set just has it all. Now, as far as the value category, moving on down the list here, it's a real coin flip. The new one obviously costs $700, and that's a bit controversial given its price per piece. That's really irrelevant to the price of a Lego set, but, uh, you know, it's there. People complain about it regardless uh the older version from 2002 retailed for 300 at the time but until it's 19 money which is more important that's about 428 dollars so paying 430 dollars essentially for that versus 700 dollars for that that's a tough one because i can see people wanting to save the 250 dollars to get a lesser model but still a ucs starter chair that is more or less the same size i can definitely see people uh, looking at this as the better value so uh, that one's kind of a toss-up to me i mean as much as i really like the new one i think 700 dollars is a fair price i also recognize that the older one while it does have some flaws and shortcomings was also a fair price for what it was i I think that value is also going to have to be a toss-up, surprisingly. And just like that, we are on to the Tantive 4. The Tantive 4 is included in both UCS Star Destroyer sets. You can see the version on the left from 2002 and the version on the right from 2019. Me personally, I actually prefer the 2002's design. I just think it looks better. I don't know. There's just something about it. The new one might have gotten too cute with using too many small, intricate detail pieces. I don't know. I, I feel like that's a bad way to put it, but that's pretty much the way I feel about it. You can see the back engine area is more or less the same. I mean, maybe I just have this nostalgic love for the O2 Tantive 4, and maybe you guys look at it differently, but I personally just like it better. You guys can let me know if you disagree with that. The 2002 version actually comes with a little stand, so you can have it flying next to the Star Destroyer on display, but perhaps better than that is what the 2019 solution for that was, and that was actually this clear piece that hangs off the side of the Star Destroyer to allow the Tantive 4 to literally fly with the Star Destroyer, which is really awesome. I think that's great. So it kind of creates a Tantive toss-up as well, or Tantive-y if you want to say it politically correct. But I mean, I like the design of that one better, but I like the functionality that they included in this one better. And I think I got to call it a toss-up. I think you can go either way. Yeah, it's just going to be up to your opinion. And that's where I'm at. On to the box and instructions category. I mean, it's kind of weird because the older Star Destroyer has a bigger box face. However, the newer one is way, way deeper than the older one. You guys can see that when we get that top view. The instruction manual on the new one is also considerably longer, coming in at about 500 pages, versus the old one looking in at about 230. As far as the building, obviously, it's Lego. It shows you how to build it well enough. Um, it shows you exactly what pieces you need for every step on the old one just like it does on the new one so that's not really an issue at all although i will say i prefer the darker blue of the background on that instruction manual to the lighter gray on this one just because i have eye floaters and i notice them occasionally when looking at the gray uh so that's just a small nitpick that not many people pick up on just a personal preference for me um now the where, where the instruction manual really shines on the new one is on the beginning like the introduction of the set where it has a bunch of history of the lego star wars star destroyer and all that kind of fun jazz of the Star Destroyer in the actual movies and everything. So, I mean, I think you can't beat this. This is really tough to top versus the old instruction manual where it literally just has none of this. So that's something really cool that the newer uh, Lego Star Wars UCS sets do that I think a lot of people uh, underappreciate. As far as the actual box art, I mean, that's a toss-up. You can pick which one you like more. The back of the box shows off the set pretty fairly on both, uh, both boxes. You can see the older version uh, kind of showing some very blurry images <laughs> zoomed in on the set there that one much nicer that one's like it's zoomed in that one looks like it was actually taken which is weird but those are the images that they show you uh, as far as the other set so much more to the box art they just like do a lot lot more with it and also inside the box there's like the special white boxes with the outline of the starter shirt but there's a very very cool look of that starter shirt as well as some of the features but uh, no words on the back i mean i think the unboxing experience and the instructions for the newer model blow the 2002 model out of the water it's not even close so there you go those are the boxes compared 
As for display stands or plaques, we have the 2002 Star Destroyers plaque on the left here. You guys can take a look at everything it says. There's a lot more information on the older one, in my opinion, and the newer one, which is integrated into the stand here, uh, just has a little bit to say, so you can pause and read that if you want, but it really just depends on your personal preference for these stands. I don't have much to say about those. As far as m &R opinion goes, I think it's pretty clear which one I like better, and that's the 2019 version. I mean, LEGO did such a great job with this one in my opinion i'm in love with it i mean i like the older one don't get me wrong i really enjoyed my time with this older one for the month that i had it before i got the new one and realized that uh it's just old and out of date and it's unfortunate, but the new one is just so beautiful. They've got so many things right on this one, so many more intricate designs and so much strength in the build compared to the old one. I mean, the old one, every time I touch it, I'm afraid it's literally gonna fall apart in my hands. This new one, I don't quite have the same fear, which I think there's something to be said for that. I mean, that's just engineering just gone so right on the new one. The Tanta 4 flying with the Star Destroyer is of course really awesome. You get a plaque with the older one and with the newer one, of course, so that's really a wash as well. But I mean, just in my opinion, the new one is just hands down better than the old one. Like there's just, everything is improved upon. I don't think there's one area of the Star Destroyer that they've gotten worse at. And I think it would be hard to do that given how many years it's been. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below which one you think is better. Let's tally up the final scores. And with everything tallied up, the new Star Destroyer has beat the old Star Destroyer by a score of seven to three. So pretty much blown it out of the water. I mean, the new Star Destroyer got a check mark in every category. I think that really says something. I don't think that happens often here on my comparison videos. So, I mean, new Star Destroyer, I mean, I, I think it's just so clear. It's literally night and day, which one is better and which one is just obviously old. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being old. Your legacy set, it's great to look back on and have nostalgic memories for, but just speaking from the heart, the new one's better. <laughs> just, it's so good. It really is so good. So please vote on the poll if you haven't already let me know which star destroyer you think is better we'll see uh, how the fans vote and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here like the video if you guys enjoyed and i'll see you all in another one if you want to check out my full-fledged review on either of those sets i'll link them down below you can look at them individually but that's all i have for you guys today thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one peace out